Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is September 20th and right now we're looking at the mid-level water vapor loop and you can see that upper level low dropping across Washington, bringing precipitation. Woke up to some nice rainfall this morning. It's going to hang out for a few days here and bring some thunderstorm potential, maybe even some higher elevation snowfall and then our eyes will turn off to the Pacific Ocean as we get some energy. You can see the initial stages of it across western Alaska will point at the Pacific Northwest. We got atmospheric river potential, we got wind potential and some of the models are looking pretty crazy. Let me just go ahead and look at the Doppler radar here for a moment. You can see the convergence zone signature across the McKean County pushing off into the foothills. Now we got the northerly sending precipitation from north to south across the area. Again, woke up to that nice rainfall this morning. So giving everything a nice watering. Some of the trees are stressed out there. I've noticed in my neighborhood and I've heard a lot of people comment on that. So hopefully we can start to put a dent in this drought across the area. This precipitation should be winding up as we go through the day today. Now, taking a look here at the NAM 12Z 3KM, this is what the Doppler radar may look like today. You can see the spin in the atmosphere, some thunderstorm potential, wraparound moisture. And yeah, the further you go off to the east, probably some stronger storm potentials go through Thursday afternoon. But you can see the continuation of this wraparound moisture into the area here. So maybe some of that will be beneficial as well. And you might get some downright heavy precip across places like Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming here for the next few days. And then our eyes will turn to the Pacific storms rolling in here. You guys have probably been hurting me hearing me talk about it here on Twitter or X or whatever they're calling it these days. Looking at yesterday, Trace, 67 degrees, a little bit below average here. And we're probably going to be adding to this precipitation total big time here as we go through the end of the month. More on that here in a moment. If you want to be entered in the weather drawing here coming up, it's probably going to happen today or tomorrow. Leave the comment weather station in the comments below on this or the California video I've done this morning. You will automatically be entered. You're, everybody is eligible to win and you'll have the station sent right to your house. Highly recommend this station. Now we're looking at the weather, uh, wetter weather returns today for Spokane. You can see there's going to be some thunderstorm threat there as well, even some small hail with some of the stronger storms, gusty winds, downpours. This was issued this morning by Spokane. Always great with the graphics. And you can see it's going to get pretty chilly out here as well. You can see the freeze watch for some areas of southern central Idaho down into northern California and northwest Nevada. So it takes steps to protect your tender plants out there. So looking at total swell. Uh, you can see this a uh, bit of a swell here associated with the system moving over us now, but then you'll clearly see the, the storm train kind of arrive here and some bigger waves start to impact the Washington, Oregon coast. Might be some nice wave watching out there, nice taste of fall here as we go through the end of September and we get multiple systems potentially rolling through the area and that's where that European as of last night ends at about 240 hours, 10 days out. Now looking at a wider view, you can see Alaska, BC, Washington here. There goes our system that we're dealing with currently, bringing some nice rainfall across the area. A little bit of a break here as you see that ridge swing through into northern Canada. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then you see the next system, the tr deep trough out here, pointing an atmospheric river out over uh, Pacific Northwest, Washington, Oregon coast, down towards northern California. As this system continues to spin off the coastline through about the 144 hour period there. Now, looking at a wider view of the GFS. You can see that system we're dealing with now drop down over the area. Ridge builds across northern Canada, but we got the big trough setting up here over the Pacific Ocean, pointing in a nice juicy fetch of moisture, atmospheric river into the Pacific Northwest, and the GFS wants to keep things active as we go on in through the end of September all the way into early October. Look at this just continued system after system bombarding the Pacific Northwest. We'll see if there's anything to that. We're looking off into fantasy land here, but the GFS definitely painting an active picture for us. Look at Seattle. Tacoma. This is the system moving over us currently here. Again, that precipitation ending today. But look at some of these solutions here in the ensemble runs, the control up towards a half an inch in a 24 hour period, actually an inch and a half in a 24 hour period there. Some of them even have a little bit more. But yeah, pretty good agreement that some nice precipitation is incoming here. And we're probably going to end September at least towards average and most likely above average. This is the GFS, something similar there, about an inch in a 24 hour period showing up here in the control run. This would be for Bellingham, something similar. You can clearly see the active pattern coming here as we move through September. Astoria, Oregon coast is going to get some nice precipitation, especially some of the southern Oregon coast. We'll look at that now. Look at Brookings. Some of these ensemble members of control up over four inches in a 24-hour period. Powerful atmospheric river. And, you know, it depends on the time of year for atmospheric rivers, whether they're beneficial or not. I mean, you don't want to drop a whole bunch of rain over these burn scar areas immediately, even though it's been pretty dry down there in the Fire has been going for what seems like months now. But yeah, this would be beneficial for a lot of areas as long as not uh, too much is not dropped in one time. But look at ensemble member number 20, over eight inches of rain in a 24-hour period. That would just kind of 
be ridiculous there. And you can see most of the ensembles are less than the four uh, four inches in a 24 hour period. A pretty interesting signal there for some of Southwest Oregon coastline. This is Vancouver Island, potential for heavy precipitation there. Whistler, you could even see the first flakes might be going on actually right now or as of uh, late last night, early this morning for some of the higher peaks. And then again, maybe as we go off into the later portion of September, this is Tillamook. We do have some wind potential coming up here, but a lot of the wind impacts look like they're going to be off the coastline for the most part. But you do see some blustery conditions, but nothing too crazy once you start getting into fall and winter months here. This is Quileute, a little bit better chance across some of northwest Washington. You can see that some of these ensembles with 50 plus mile per hour gusts here. And again, this would be Sunday night and as we go on into Monday morning. So we'll be watching this system closely. You know, the models are going to be changing here, of course, as we go day by day. This is Hoquiam. Washington coast, you can see some 50s intermixed there as well. We'll be watching that system, like I said. In Seattle, you could get some blustery conditions with this front that moves through here as we go through the day Monday. You see some of these up over 40 miles per hour, but for the most part, nothing too crazy right now. Now let's look at the European. This is last night's run, and you can clearly see as we go, deep low pressure developing off the coastline, powerful atmospheric river into the area there, and look at that. What is that, a 973 millibar low? That would look pretty interesting on the satellite imagery. And as this thing wobbles and spins out here, this could be a coastal tornado producer actually as well. Pretty good shear in the atmosphere and a lot of moisture being brought up with this system. So something I'll be looking for over the next few days as well. Obviously, you're not going to make a forecast on based on several days out for tornadoes, which would in any case probably be on the weak side. But you know you can't get strong ones here. Dude, the Manzanita EF2 happened back in 2016 so you can get stronger tornadoes around here from time to time and you know just take that with a grain of salt we'll be looking at that plenty here over the next couple of days don't worry about it just yet this is the gfs total precipitation in inches and this is last night's run and you can see the precipitation from the system here in the wraparound moisture and the low pressure system just kind of dancing across the intermountain west but then look at this storm track point of the pacific northwest here goes that initial burst as we go through sunday atmospheric river look at some of these impressive totals all the way up and down the coastline and it's not done check it out we go off into the future a bit more you can see some of the oregon coast just getting hammered here look at seattle approaching four inches towards the 300 hour mark on the gfs big amounts across the cascades coastal range and look at southwest oregon kind of being bullseye there as well as well as areas north of vancouver island but huge precipitation amounts showing up in some of these model runs i mean look at the cascades up over eight nine ten inches here if you look at the fantasy gfs look at seattle over six inches take that with a grain of salt of course we'll be watching these individual systems as they come in one at a time here but an interesting signal here on the gfs that we'll be watching this is the european as of yesterday afternoon there goes our system we're dealing with now you can see it spinning across the intermountain west and then the atmospheric river arrives and you can see impressive totals showing up here too this would be by next monday night look at this a nice dousing of rainfall across the region and look at seattle up over two and a half inches the oregon coast vancouver island you know, most of the area getting rainfall, even a little bit leaking off to the east of the Cascades here. But yeah, 10 day period shows three plus inches for Seattle. And again, this is just one run, the deterministic of the European and multiple systems. We'll see how these go day by day. You know how the trends can work. Seattle Tacoma, this is looking way off into the early portion of November. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you can see the temperatures, how they drop off once you get towards later October. As we start to head into our fall months, the daylight starts getting pretty sparse here. So yeah. Get your jackets out, your parkas, your hard shells, your coats, whatever you need, because, you know, fall is eventually coming here. But maybe we'll have a, actually not too bad of a day here in the break between that upper level low and the Pacific systems. You might want to get out there and enjoy that weather there. But anyway, looking at Seattle, Tacoma, check out the GFS, the multiple run trend here. You can see one, two, three chances here with inch plus precipitation showing up in the GFS. Of course, this is just kind of fantasy, but it's just fun to look at here. And you can see the variation model. Uh, versus model run versus model run here. So we're taking it with a grain of salt, but it never hurts to get excited about the weather. It allows you to be more prepared, in my opinion. Here we're looking at Hoquiam. You can see the nice precipitation totals potentially coming for the Washington coast. And just taking a quick look here at total snow, you can see this upper level low drop in some snow for the higher terrain, as you see across Yellowstone, maybe some of the higher terrain of the North Cascades, some of Eastern Oregon on the higher peaks there as well. So just kind of a novelty this time of year, no big impacts. Six to 10 day precipitation. You can see the National Weather Service is on to us here, September 29th here. And there's that above average signal right along the Oregon and Washington, California coast. 
but yeah, interesting stuff coming in here. And we're going to break this down day by day. I'll do that weather shaking it station giveaway at some point today and then i'll announce the what i'm just going to do the random drawing by myself and announce it because i assume that i have a lot of people put in the comments weather station giveaway and then you're going to be automatically entered again everybody is eligible i'm also working on that el nino video still got that going i'm waiting that, da that new data i'm going to add should be in tomorrow a longer range forecast there from the climate prediction center but anyway yeah i hope you guys are liking these videos we'll watch these systems come in day by day getting a little bit excited here so maybe twisting my own tongue here a little bit as i get excited for these systems coming in the fall but yeah we'll watch these day by day we'll nail down these details we'll see what kind of wind forecast we're going to have along the coastlines as well and we'll see if there's any truth to those huge precipitation amounts as we go on into early october but anyway yeah hope you guys are liking these videos leave the comments below and i will talk to you guys tomorrow